Hello, uh, this is Paul Trinovsky with the Sustainable Forestry Initiative, and I'm here with my colleague Jason Metnick, also of SFI, and we are pleased to present you today with a uh, an SFI 101 presentation. This is a bit of a makeup session. We had some technical difficulties with our live session earlier this week, and so uh, today is August 28th, and we're going to be recording this session and making it available to Forest Service personnel who are interested in learning more about SFI. And uh, just to give you a little bit of background as we get started, I'll note that uh, this session and, uh, in fact, uh, some ensuing sessions were developed uh, through a conversation between our uh, president and CEO, that is Kathy Abuso, and also the chief of the Forest Service, Vicki Christensen, who had a discussion some time ago and realized that there are a lot of intersecting interests of our two organizations. And so uh, this strategy was developed by myself and Anna Briatico with the Forest Service to try to uh, develop ways for us to pursue those conversations in a focused kind of fashion. So over the next few weeks, what you're going to see is, uh, is actually a series of presentations that reflect those topical areas. And so on September 9th, we're going to have the performance metrics uh, session. Uh, September 22nd is uh, a reprisal of performance metrics, but specifically around the, uh, the work of the FIA program. And then with the two more sessions after that, we'll be talking about climate adaptation practices and lastly, Forest Service research priorities. So that's the slate of attention that we'll have over the next few weeks. You'll see some of those topics reflected in our discussion today. And as we go through the session, um, uh, keep that in mind. And if you wanna go deeper into those topics, then please join us for one of those sessions, which I believe that Anna will be placing on your calendar. But right now, we just wanna give you a general overview of SFI, what we're about, and uh, some of our thoughts about those uh, intersecting ideas. And so I'll just go ahead and get started. I'll make mention, uh, it could be that some of you know about SFI as a, as a nonprofit organization. We've been around now for 25 years, but really within the last few years, we've evolved quite a lot into uh, something more than uh, the standard setting organization that we started out as. So now SFI is a broad-based nonprofit organization, which really uh, does a lot of different things. We have a vision of a world that values and benefits from sustainably managed forests with a mission to advance uh, sustainability through forest-focused collaborations. That's what we're about as a nonprofit organization. We still, uh, we, we operate within the areas of uh, four principal operating areas that we call pillars. You'll see that standards is still there. So many of you may know us as a standard setting uh, organization for forest sustainability and chain of custody standards and forest certification. And that still remains true, but we've expanded other program areas as well to really hit all the primary topics that you would expect of a sustainability nonprofit, including conservation, education, and community engagement. And we'll talk a little bit about each of those as we go along today. Our board reflects the, that diversity of thought as well. So all the things that you would normally expect uh, to be included in, the, uh, in, in a, an organization that thinks about forest sustainability and uh, writ large, all those elements are here. So economic, environmental, and social chambers of our board represent a diversity of, uh, of, of kinds of uh, thought and participation that can help advance our work. I do wanna mention our senior leadership team through the course of our individual conversations coming up over the next few weeks. You might have opportunity to meet a few more of these folks. And again, uh, Jason's with us today and you'll hear from him shortly. I, uh, one of the things that I wanna point to immediately, and Jason will talk a little bit more about this, but SFI is an organization that has achieved quite a degree of scale throughout our 25 year history. We operate in the US and Canada and at this point in time, we have about 375 million acres that have been certified to the forest management standard. We also are an organization that promotes forest related research and we're the only standard in the world that has a stipulation that our certified organizations must, must uh, pursue and participate in forest related research. To date, that's uh, generated about $1.8 billion in investments. So it's quite a significant contribution to our shared understanding of what forestry is about and what sustainability is about. We have local implementation committees that operate on the ground throughout the US and Canada, uh, 34 of those, and they uh, provide us an opportunity to make connections directly down to the ground. Even though we have such large scale, it actually reverberates 
as, um, as forest-based uh, solutions all the way down to the ground. And our Project Learning Tree programs have now reached about 140 million students, which is an amazing contribution to the field of uh, environmental education. I would point out that our uh, the timing of this growth and this attention is, I think, uh, directly attributable to the to the elevated understanding that people have now about the, the ways in which forests matter. So we all understand the sustainably forest, uh, sustainably managed forests combat climate change. Um, we also know now that about a third of consumers have actively tried to uh, uh, to to buy packaging that is something other than plastic, and uh, there are a lot of solutions being generated within the SFI community um, uh, to try to generate products that can be replacements for plastics. And so that sort of elevated understanding works to our benefit. In the corporate sector, there are, uh, there's a great deal of attention in the corporate sector now to uh, the sustainable development goals that have been established by the UN, and SFI pays attention to that as well. So that as corporations develop sustainability standards or even speak specifically to the goals of the uh, sustainable development goals, then uh, they can count on SFI as being a partner in that work and helping to support those, uh, those objectives as well. And I think it's, all, it's clear to everyone on this call, certainly, that sustainable managed forests help the planet. And we like to say we have a growing solution. All this attention together has helped to uh, motivate the growth and success of SFI. And so with that, I'll turn it over to my colleague, Jason Metnick, uh, who will introduce himself and lead you through a, a little discussion about our standards, which is um, one of the largest and most important aspects of our work. Jason? Great, thanks, Paul. And um, if you can stop your uh, screen share and, uh, and I'll, um, I'll put mine up and, uh, and put these uh, slides up. And so thank you very much for joining um, us today. My name is Jason Metnick. I'm the Senior Vice President of Customer Affairs at SFI, and as Paul mentioned, our four pillars of work, standards, conservation, community, and education, I oversee the standards um, pillar at, at SFI. And, and we know that people and organizations, they're seeking solutions that really go beyond just limiting negative impacts, and, and they want to make these positive contributions, whether it's positive contributions to reducing waste, to water, to climate, to economic development. And in SFI, we have standards that, that really can help those people and organizations um, uh, make those positive contributions. And when leveraged with our other pillars of work, um, the conservation community and education, we believe we provide uh, practic practical, scalable solutions um, for these markets and for these communities. Um, and it's really through these standards that, that SFI oversees that more forests are, are being well managed, which means more effort is being put into conserving healthy forests, conserving wildlife, cons uh, providing clean water, and, and really making more sustainable products, whether those be wood, paper, packaging uh, uh, products that, that are derived from, uh, from the forest. SFI, we oversee three um, certification standards. We have a forest management standard, a fiber sourcing standard, and a chain of custody standard. It's important to note that all three of these standards um, are being um, uh, revised currently as part of our standards revision process. We, we revise all of our standards uh, uh, once every five or so years, and, and it's part of the continual improvement process at, um, at SFI. Within the forest management standard, this is really designed for those forest managers, those landowners that own or, or, or manage uh, forest land. And this is where you see requirements such as the protection of water quality, the biodiversity requirements, reforestation requirements, protection of, of wildlife habitats and species at risk, sustainable harvest levels. And so this is where you see all of those um, uh, performance measures and indicators um, for how a landowner or land manager um, oversees uh, that, uh, that, that forest land. Within the SFI uh, uh, forest management standard, there are over 375 million acres that are third party certified to that standard. It is the largest standard um, as far as certification um, within the, the U.S. and Canada, um, which gives us some um, scale that, uh, that Paul uh, talked about earlier. 375 million acres, our scope is in the U.S. and Canada. 
it is a strong diversity of, um, of various landowners as, as well that are a part of um, the SFI certification process. Um, there's provincial and state lands, which I'll talk about in, in a second, private landowners, university lands like Clemson University, conservation lands, nonprofit organizations, as well as indigenous landowners. Um, indigenous landowners, there's over about 40 different indigenous lands in both the uh, U.S. and Canada that are certified to the SFI forest management standard. I mentioned state agencies, and state agencies represent about 31% of all um, uh, U.S. Uh, certified acres um, uh, to the forest management standard. You can see the dark green um, here are the states that currently um, are certified under the SFI forest management standard. We're also in discussions with many other um, state agencies as well. And, um, and we truly believe that they're a, a strong partner um, uh, within the SFI community and, and the growth of SFI uh, over the years as well. The second standard I want to quickly talk about is our fiber sourcing standard. This standard is really designed for those manufacturers who may not own forest land but are still procuring fiber from the small family forest landowners across the U.S. and Canada. What this standard does is it really takes a proactive approach in promoting responsible forestry across the entire landscape, not just those lands um, that, that maybe a, a landowner is already certified to, but it's really getting out and, 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 and having these proactive requirements to ensure that these uh, manufacturers, no matter where the fiber uh, uh, supply comes from, that they're using trained loggers, that they're educating the landowners about the benefits of sustainable forestry, that they're um, uh, supplying um, um, uh, funds and, and contributions to research and conservation as, as well. Um, this is truly a unique aspect of SFI. No other forest certification standard takes this proactive approach and really looking at the more good um, instead of just limiting risk. SFI also does have strong provisions within our standards that look at avoiding controversial sources, but this goes beyond that. This goes beyond just the negative impacts and really how we can make those positive contributions that I spoke about earlier. Finally, the third standard is, is chain of custody. Chain of custody is merely just a, a, a accounting system um, a type uh, um, audit, and it's looking at, at the fiber flow, whether um, from the forest all the way to that brand owner. So from um, landowner to brand owners is, is, like we, uh, is, is, is how we discuss it. And, and it's looking at how much of the fiber within this end product comes from certified lands how much uh, may come from non-certified lands, and what are some of the measures to ensure that that still is, um, is, is coming from a responsible source. And then finally, how much may come from recycled fiber so that you can accurately make um, claims on products uh, based off of this um, accounting system type audit. <clears throat> I mentioned um, audits and third-party certification. All of our standards um, uh, require third-party certification. Here's a small snapshot of some of the um, accredited certification bodies that offer those third-party um, audits. And um, and then in each of these um, uh, certification bodies, they're also accredited um, and, and certified by other organizations as well, such as the American National Standards Institute, ANAB, as well as the Standards Council of Canada. So they even have a checks and balances um, um, on on their work to to ensure that that we are credibly uh, um, and that they are credibly performing these audits um, in a meaningful way. SFI is also part of a larger international community. I mentioned that our scope for our forest management standard is just in the U.S. and Canada, but SFI is also part of a program called the Program for the Endorsement of Forest Certification. PEFC serves as an umbrella organization that endorses regional or national standards across the world. SFI is one of 50 different programs globally that's part of this PEFC umbrella. Um, but it's important to note that, um, that while um, our scope is just in the U.S. and Canada, Globally, if you count all certified land, um, whether it's under the PEFC umbrella or other certification programs, SFI accounts for about 25% of all global certified lands. And so while our, our focus is here in the U.S. and Canada and, and, and the good that we can do in the U.S. and Canada, we understand the flow of fibers international in nature. And because of that, 
Um, SFI does have an international uh, footprint as well, given our scope and given our scale. With all of this, we have seen a lot of uh, great recognition um, uh, from market leaders, from government organizations, whether it's the World Business Council on Sustainable Development or, um, or the U.S. Green Building Council's lead um, rating tool who recognizes SFI certified wood, or IUCN, um, or the Consumer Goods Forum, or Sustainability Consortium. We are seeing more and more government um, organizations, market leaders, um, recognizing the good work of SFI within their own policies and in, um, in ensuring that, that uh, wood products are being sourced in a responsible way. And SFI is that avenue that, that they look to um, to ensure that, that it's coming from good forestry operations. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to my colleague, Paul. I'm going to stop my screen share here, Paul, and uh, turn it over to you to, uh, to, to uh, go through these next few slides. Uh, thank you very much, Jason. And so um, let's see if I can get this queued up. Okay. So I'm going to talk a little bit. Uh, Jason mentioned the uh, standards pillar and all the work that we're doing there. I'm going to uh, talk uh, primarily about conservation as that's where the the discussions with the U.S. Forest Service have led us, but we're all, I'll also mention our work in community engagement and also our education-related programs. So I do want to mention that um, our conservation pillar is intended to advance credible and effective solutions to environmental challenges uh, through both the standards and also our leadership initiatives. It's important to note that SFI as a nonprofit organization is broader than just the standards, but the standards form a really important platform from which we work and give us the opportunity to think about these conservation challenges at a, uh, a really amazing scale across the U.S. and Canada. And Jason mentioned uh, uh, the, the SFI standards in terms of performance measures. One of the things that we've been thinking about the last few years is how to um, uh, talk about our, our, our performance, not just in terms of the actual uh, activities or performance actions taken on the ground, but in terms of outcomes that are translatable to other kinds of stakeholders and audiences. And so, uh, we conceived a few years ago the idea of conservation impact, which talks more about outcomes in the areas of water, biodiversity, and I would say climate change, primarily carbon, but also climate change in terms of resilience. And we embarked on this effort to try to define our outcomes more uh, specifically and more clearly so that we could uh, help brand owners to understand the impact of their sourcing our own program participants or certified organizations. They can have reasons to better understand why their own certification is really making a difference. And of course, conservation stakeholders need to better understand the value of certification. And I would argue better understand the value of sustainable forest management uh, writ large. And of course, all of this leads to improved understanding uh, and continual improvement in SFI through the standards revision that Jason was talking about as well. Jason also mentioned the idea of limiting risk to advancing positive outcomes. We are in a unique position to advance the range of benefits from sustainable forests because of our scale. And we work with a variety of partners to do this. So um, our vast footprint puts us in a unique place to magnify the impact of sustainable forest management. And so our certification uh, organizations advance these outcomes in the areas of carbon, water, and biodiversity conservation. And we're doing our best to try to capture those outcomes and better understand that work more effectively. So in uh, 2016, we announced this conservation impact effort at the IUCN World Conservation Congress. And since that time, we've uh, engaged in a number of projects. The, uh, the idea or the goal of which is to develop measurable metrics based in sound science, of course, they need to be repeatable and translatable and ultimately connect the dots through the supply chain so that uh, parties that utilize those SFI certified products can understand what the real uh, conservation related outcomes and conservation related attributes are that are embedded in those projects. We have uh, a group that we call the sounding board, which helps to ensure transparency and engagement. And we've fallen into a rhythm of having two sounding board meetings a year. This year we had a couple of virtual 
sounding board meetings in May and June, focused on the topics of uh, climate change and, and water quality respectively. But those sounding board meetings over the course of time have attracted an amazing diversity of participants. It's an open door policy. It's not a formally engaged group, but we uh, invite you to join us and certainly have had Forest Service representation there at I think every sounding board meeting since it was initiated. And that's important to us. Uh, but through this group, we actually talk about projects, talk about ways that they might be improved, talk about what's missing in terms of our conservation impact investigations. And it's really been a, a productive course for us to be able to better improve our conservation impact uh, uh, work and research. I did mention earlier that SFI is the only standard with a requirement for research. On an annual basis, uh, that generates about $60 million worth of reported projects from our certified organizations. And I would note that about 70% of that research funding is linked to conservation-related objectives as we try to understand the categories of research that they engage in. So in total, $1.8 billion since 1995, as I mentioned earlier, and uh, that's quite a significant contribution to our shared understanding. I also think it's important to note that SFI, uh, you may remember that we have this collaborative-based mission that reverberates through our certified organizations and the projects that they report back to us. So just to take an example, in 2019, they reported back to us over 500 different conservation and research-related projects taking place within their organizations. Uh, citing partnerships with about 900 unique partner organizations. Just an amazing diversity of organizations that are involved with SFI at a variety of scales. I'm going to share with you just a few of the projects that we have under the banner of Conservation Impact. These are primarily driven by our Conservation Grants Program, uh, which infuses some dollars, not a huge amount of money, but we have a little bit that we try to infuse into these programs to generate research to help us gain this understanding. And I'll share just a few of these so you can get a sense what they're about. Working with the American Bird uh, Conservancy, we have been and actually continue to engage with them on a project to uh, better understand how certified forests and sustainably managed forests can contribute to bird species at risk. And there was a recent report, as you all know, about uh, the decline of birds uh, uh, across the world, and we're uh, particularly concerned about that in the U.S. and Canada. And so this work with the American Bird Conservancy is actually looking for ways to improve forest management to stem that decline within the scope of managed forests. Michigan State University uh, did a great project where they actually looked at SFI certification and tried to better understand the climate-related benefits not specifically the climate-related requirements within SFI, but across all of our standards within the forest management standard and fiber sourcing standard. And uh, what they learned was that a lot of the sustainability-related requirements within the SFI program standard actually serve to um, improve the condition of forests relative to carbon sequestration and also climate change resiliency. NatureServe has been a, a long-standing and close partner of SFI, and uh, we presented NatureServe with an audacious question. It's like, how do you measure biodiversity across 370 million acres, do so in a way that's uh, repeatable and understandable? And so they actually uh, embarked on a process to try to uh, develop parameters for measuring biodiversity values across that enormous footprint. That uh, took place in the United States in terms of their initial projects. Now we're starting to work on a cross-border project uh, in, in partnership with, uh, uh, with certified lands in Canada so that we can actually expand that understanding and eventually arrive at a more complete understanding of the biodiversity values across the entire SFI footprint. The University of Georgia has worked with us, particularly on the fiber sourcing side, to help us to understand the role of SFI fiber sourcing certification in advancing water quality outcomes. And we learned uh, very interestingly that, uh, at least in the state of Georgia, that there's a direct correlation between SFI's fiber sourcing certification programs and the implementation of water quality practices and, of course, logger training, which has been a big part of SFI's work in fiber sourcing. And so we now have evidence that going back uh, over the last 25 years, 
that there's a direct relationship between the work that we've promoted and the water quality outcomes that we've all hoped for. And lastly, I'll make note that uh, Manomet has been a partner with us. They, they're up in Maine, but they actually have been looking at climate change resiliency in managed forests. And so they're developing new tools and better understanding regarding the practices that take place in sustainably managed forests and how those practices can actually help develop resiliency looking toward the future in the face of climate change. So these are just a few of the projects that we've been engaged in. There are 24 in total, some of them complete, some of them ongoing. And uh, this is all under the banner of our uh, conservation impact work. And so with that, I'll turn the corner and talk a little bit about our community, our community engagement pillar. And uh, their goal is to advance collaboration between local communities and the SFI network. And again, to increase the understanding of the values and benefits of sustainably managed forests. We all know that communities rely on forests for jobs and economic development, recreational benefits and human health. I think that's not news to anyone who might be viewing this video. And so we all understand that those values are important to people and to uh, their ability to move forward. I mentioned earlier that logger training has been a tremendous success through the SFI programs. Just in 2019, there have been 10,000 plus logger training sessions carried out where they learn to implement uh, sustainability related practices and particularly best management practices for water quality has been an important uh, central focus of that work. Uh, since our inception in 1995, there have been almost 214,000 logger training sessions. And we know that uh, the amount of wood that's been delivered uh, from trained loggers has increased from 34% in 1995 to 96% just last year. And uh, that's been a direct consequence of this uh, logger training effort. And we know that, that the implementation of BMP practices in many states where even places where it's not required by law, that that implementation rate has gone up as well. And we, and, uh, we have some evidence, at least from Georgia, that that's directly related to these logger training efforts. Well, I mentioned earlier a little bit about the um, SFI implementation committees. We have 34 of those. Most of them are at a state level. Uh, some of them are at multi-state or multi-provincial uh, levels. And uh, there are investments by those SFI implementation committees in local communities to do a wide variety of things, including Habitat for Humanity engagement, uh, engagement with uh, local civic groups and community engagement groups. And all of this is to develop a link on the ground uh, as we think about forestry as a nature-based solution for a lot of our uh, uh, community and forest and environmental related needs. There's a community grant program, again, a small amount of money, but there is a program there that we try to use to, uh, to try to motivate this engagement on the ground. It involves youth, indigenous groups, and loggers, as well as many other kinds of partners. And you can see a handful of those uh, recipients of community grants over the last few years. Jason mentioned this as well, and I'll just underscore it because it's something we're very proud of that there have been um, over 120 indigenous communities engaged with our work. Jason mentioned that there are, I think, uh, 40 some odd indigenous groups that are certified by the SFI forest management standards, but our work extends beyond that into indigenous communities and communities of need throughout the United States and Canada. SFI is proud to have on board an, an expert in indigenous relations who actually leads this work for us and it's been a very successful and, and we believe very important element of our work. I'd also point out that, that uh, outdoor recreation uh, obviously is an important attribute of, of forests and a way to connect people to, uh, to the environment. 96% of the forests certified to the SFI standard are available for outdoor recreation to the general public. And we're very proud of that fact as well. Lastly, I'll mention our education pillar. And uh, many of you uh, may understand that, it, that uh, Project Learning Tree, which is a longstanding program, it's been a nonprofit uh, organization for a very long time, actually moved over and became part of SFI within the last few years. And the goal of our education pillar is to advance environmental literacy, stewardship, and career pathways using trees and forests as windows on the world. So uh, Project Learning Tree is, is the uh, uh, the flagship program within our education work, and uh, they have, uh, they're reaching uh, 3 million students with environmental education just in 2019. 
an enormously successful program with a very long history. And we're proud to have them within SFI where they can become part of our broader based approach to thinking about sustainability. Um, so 3 million students reached in 2019. That's through 14,000 educators, 750 uh, workshops, and uh, 140 million students reached since the in, uh, inception of the uh, Project Learning Tree programs. Um, they're still an award-winning program. We like to say that Project Learning Tree, the award-winning education program, but that extends even to the present. So within the last couple of years, they, they received some really prestigious awards. Uh, the Carbon and Climate Curriculum and Energy and Ecosystems E-Unit uh, won the Teacher's Choice Award for the classroom, for example. And so uh, they, have been, they continue to set the pace for environmental education in that field. The Project Learning Tree Network has continued to grow. You can see a number of the co countries here involved. And specifically, uh, PLT Canada is a relatively new program of Project Learning Tree. And in Canada, it has taken um, a very distinct flavor of job creation in the environmental sector. So that SFI uh, through Project Learning Tree Canada is now making a real difference with 2,500 youth in green jobs across Canada since 2018. So in a very short period of time, uh, SFI and Project Learning Tree Canada have become leaders in this space. Uh, Jason mentioned earlier the state agencies that are engaged in our standards implementation. State agencies have been a significant partner as well. And I say this uh, particularly for our friends in the Forest Service who are involved with uh, state and private forestry within uh, USFS, that uh, there's been a close partnership in many cases with the state forest agencies, but uh, with a broad range of agencies and partners within these states. And so that uh, Project Learning Tree has had tremendous success uh, with those agencies and with um, you know, bringing kids to youth education uh, throughout the United States. So with that, well, we don't have any questions today because we're not uh, live with you in person, but I will just uh, uh, put up on the screen for a moment our contact information. If you have any questions or thoughts about uh, any of these presentations, any of these ideas that we've offered up, I invite you to reach out to myself or to Jason. And uh, certainly over the next few weeks as we host our uh, individual topical calls, you'll get to know us a little bit better and other members of the SFI staff as well. So with that, I'll offer our thanks to all of you and uh, uh, let you know how much we appreciate our uh, partnership with the U.S. Forest Service, the work that we've done together in the past, and uh, what work we may contemplate doing together in the future. And so with that, we'll sign off and look forward to speaking with you individually during our upcoming calls. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.